hit the record button. And uh, what I'd love to do, uh, really the, the purpose of these masterminds is to bring like-minded agents together that uh, are experiencing uh, whatever they're experiencing, right? The good stuff, the bad stuff. And we get an opportunity to uh, hopefully have a, a bit of a higher level conversation about how to uh, in, improve your businesses and how to uh, in, you know, improve the quality of your life. And as you continue to sell more and more homes and you, um, you know, have more and more opportunities and clients, there's going to be a new set of challenges that, that come into your world. And um, I'd like an opportunity to help you navigate those challenges. So um, talk to me a little bit about uh, what you're experiencing now. And let me see if I can give you some ideas or maybe the stuff Julian's having trouble with, maybe Doris can help with or vice versa. So um, who wants to start? How about a quick refresh on, on the community association disclosure? Uh, traditionally, the buyer's uh, cost, as long as the seller discloses the fees, transfer costs, that type of thing. Yes. So generally, uh, great question. Generally, the seller will com obviously complete the disclosure um, and whatever they disclose becomes a buyer cost uh, unless it's otherwise negotiated. And if it's something that is not disclosed, uh, the paperwork specifies that it will then become a seller cost. Um, I just a word of caution on that. It is not um, I don't believe that it helps anybody. Uh, I don't believe that it helps anybody to like try to create all these kind of like gotcha moments, right? So first of all, um, I don't really care what the HOA disclosure says. If I'm involved in the transaction, I'm personally going to confirm all that information. Okay. So right. during the buyer's due diligence period, I'm going to call the HOA and say, hey, I'm looking at this three-page disclosure and it says the fees are $325 a month. Is that correct? What does uh -huh. it cover? What does it not cover? Are there any litig is there any litigation at the community? What's your rental rate? Where are you at? What's your cap? Is there any any uh, assessments being considered? Um, is there any uh, anything that I should be aware of that is not on this sheet of paper? Right? Is it true that the cable bill is included? Is it true that the water bill is included? Right? I'm checking out everything. Remember that. Um, uh, many communities, many HOA communities have uh, um, boards, right? And they also have uh, rules and regulations. And many times the rules and regulations will specify that in order to raise the HOA fees, they need a quorum. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I've been part of HOA meetings where we just about had to like give away TVs to get people to show up to create a quorum, which means that not only is it hard to get a quorum, of the residents to vote in a certain way, but getting them to getting them to vote for a fee increase is not all that common, okay, right? And so what a lot of HOAs have done in an effort to, I mean, a lot of times they have to, they have to raise the money somehow, right? So they may end up having transfer fees or initiation fees or new member fees, or you gotta pay this amount for the clicker and this amount for the info book and this amount because it's sunny outside. Like there are some insane charges out, out there right now. And this is their roundabout way of increasing revenue when they can't get the community to vote on it the right way, right? It's kind of like when Congress won't do what the president wants them to do, the president just does an executive order. You see what I'm saying? It's uh, that's not political. It's just what happens. Okay. If you can't get the group to do what you need them to do, you have an executive order. This is their executive order. Fees are going uh, that we got a transfer fee now, right? So Julian, let's say you bought 10 years ago and they didn't have that transfer fee. And when I ask you to fill out the seller's disclosure, or I'm sorry, the community disclosure, you're like, oh, no transfer fee. Right. And then nobody bothers to check it. And then it turns out at the closing that it's a $400 transfer fee. Guess who is legally obligated to pay that? The, the seller. seller. <laughs> Guess who's going to be pissed off that they're legally obligated to pay it? The seller. The seller. <laughs> Guess who they're probably going to stare at uh, so that this closing can continue to go through. <clears throat> Luckily, we can say the coach told us that. No, the coach told <laughs> you to double check everything. Right. And this is being recorded just so you know okay 
You it's seem so protected at this point. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've done a lot of dumb things and said a lot of dumb things, but this one is perfectly clear. We are being recorded on March 18th. Double check everything. The uh, I had a closing last year where the seller basically did not disclose the correct truth and got to pay for it at closing. And I said, gosh, we just, you know, I wouldn't know what the information was, which I did. She claimed she was something, but anyway, she cost her a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. You know what? We, we have an opportunity. Remember that um, we are, we, we get paid a lot of money each time we get paid. Right. But we don't get paid enough money to screw people over, not to mention the fact that it's just not the right thing to do, right? So our paychecks are big, but they're not big enough to never follow up with that person again. So you could have spent months or years developing this relationship. Everything is going wonderful until the closing and something silly like a $200 initiation fee that wasn't figured out beforehand makes the whole moments you know, awkward or they, they leave that experience without the best taste in their mouth because something popped up at the last minute that could have potentially been avoided. So I don't know if Melba would agree with me on this, but I'm going to confirm everything on there. And if I find out there's a transfer fee and no one told me about the transfer fee, I'm gonna call the other agent and say, I suggest you refill this thing out and re-disclose it to us because there's a transfer fee and I don't want it to ruin the closing. Most of these associations now go to a California company called HomeWise Stocks, and you can get that information in writing, basically, which is protects uh, the, your, your seller and, and yourself ultimately as well. Right. Um, so does that answer your question? Yes. Julian? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I cannot stress how important it is. And by the way, I got to tell you, I, I'm doing a deal. I don't do a lot of deals, but my good buddy's buying a place and happens to be buying it off market. So we're um, putting together this, this deal for a condo. And um, these disclosure statements that they sent me, man, they look sharp. I mean, everything is buttoned up. I don't know if it was the agent involved that took a kind of a messy disclosure and made it pretty before they shared it with us. But when you get a, when you get every uh, something from the other party and it's all buttoned up looking and there's no mistakes and like everything is thorough and everything is labeled properly and everything is looks good, man, don't you have a different attitude around dealing with that person? Like I looked at this disclosure statement. I'm like, this is beautiful, right? I don't have to go back to them for all the silly, like, you know, landscape lights and switch plate covers and all the stuff that everyone always forgets, right? It just gives you a different feeling about working with that agent. So it, when, when I'm working with a seller, I know it's the seller's responsibility to make the disclosure and not me, but if the disclosures are not thorough or it's messy, then I'm going to ask the seller to redo it, right? So for, I'll give you an example. Let's say that there was a flood in the basement, right? And uh, I asked you, Julian, to complete the disclosure statement. And you write, the basement was flooded. We cleaned it all up. Is that true? Yeah. Yes. Does that, is it possible we could like give the buyer yes, like, a little bit more information that might make them feel a little bit better about moving forward? Let me give you an example. Um, flood occurred. We called the insurance company immediately. All work was done by licensed and insured and bonded professionals. Uh, all receipts are available. Uh, the mold test came back negative, right? Everything is warranted. We'll give you everything upon request. No problem since. Does that make you feel a little bit better? Very much. Okay. So don't just accept whatever the seller says. Say, hey, can, can, let's. I'm not saying to lie, obviously, but be thorough enough to give them some reassurance that it was dealt with properly, right? Don't say basement flooded. My uncle, who was a part-time plumber way back in college, decided to fix it. And, uh, you know, we love Uncle Johnny. It's like, well, damn, come on now. That doesn't give me much confidence. You see what I'm saying? Even Uncle Johnny? I mean, if Uncle Johnny, you know, is bonded and insured and has all his paperwork buttoned up, I'm cool with that. But I just don't think that that's the case. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yes. 
Okay. Um, and by the way, if you get a disclosure in like just silly stuff, like, you know, chandeliers not checked or, you know, switch plate covers aren't checked or, you know, telephone outlets not checked or something that you know should be done, just go back to them and say, hey, make, let's make this thing look sharp. You know what I'm saying? Okay, what else is on your mind, guys? A number you got for me the other day um, was was a, a expired from last year here in my neighborhood that uh, that didn't sell. About the only home that didn't sell last year. So I called him yesterday. The number was good. And we had a great conversation. He just sit, went on Zillow um, two days ago. So one point one million. So I said I've got a lot of information for you. Let's meet. So anyway, we're we're going to be meeting. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank Luth. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, no problem. You need to, uh, Doris, just so you make so you can make sense of that comment, um, and anyone else that might listen to this later. Um, you know, we have a. I, you know, I do a lot of recruiting. You know, and my team does a lot of recruiting, and so we have a few services that uh, we can basically look up people's names and numbers. And it's not always right, but I think we're now two for two, Julian. And, um, you know, uh, it'll give you another number to reach out to in, in an effort in an effort to provide your, you know, to pitch your services to somebody. Um, interestingly enough, we, we I'm recruiting actually two women with the same name at the same company, different offices of the same company, but the same company. Yes. And um, my assistant, I asked her to, to find the name of this of this person and she found the wrong per she found the other person. Right. And so she put the phone number down. I called the phone number and it was the wrong number. And she's like, oh, it's not the right person. Then I did it again, like two weeks later. And I called the wrong number again. Right. Because I was just going through the list. And she says, I, you, you, she started laughing. I'm like, it's the wrong number, isn't it? I said, I'm sorry. I said, there must be a reason why I'm trying to call you. So how's your business? Next thing you know, she's meeting with Aubrey. You know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. like. I don't care if it's the wrong number or not. They live somewhere also, right? And everyone needs a place to live. They're either going to own it or they're going to rent it. And we can help with either of those. You don't live locally? Cool. I can help you with that too, right? So remember, we're, we, are in the, uh, we are in the relationship building business. The more relationships you have, the more deals you'll close. Simple. What else? So um, this man that's been on Zillow for two days, um, how, how's the best way to, to bring this thing home? Because should I try to just go for the listing appointment? Just meet, just meet him and so, say hello. And so let me make sure I, I heard everything correctly. So this is somebody that you were courting a while back when it was an expired listing. No, it's just a, a one I kept track of. Um, I, it came up. It came to me that you pull these lists of the neighborhood of, of expires for the last year, and that he was like the only one. I said, "Well, I wonder what he's going to do this year." So that was a 2020 number. So anyway, I I so called him. Have you ever room. have you ever spoken with him? Does he know who you are? Yesterday, we had a, had a great conversation, about 15 minutes, and got along great. So maybe. The next step is he wanted me to send him his contact information. So that's where I am. So I'm ready to move it ahead after he spends yeah. a couple of weeks in pain. He's a little bit overpriced, just a little, no pool. Um, but I think he's got a finished basement. Um, I would get in front of him as soon as possible, long before two or three weeks go by. Got it. Right. So, Hey, I'm going to be in your area on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, whatever day you, you'll allow me to be in the area. I'll be in the area that day. We're about 10 houses apart. So, we're so oh, even better. Hey, I'm always in your area. I happen oh. to live two doors down. Okay. So um, could I swing by and take a look at your home? Right. Uh, I, I work with home buyers and sellers all day. I'm looking for buyers for my sellers and sellers for my buyers. And um, I just want an opportunity to see how I can help you today. That's the Not approach. I have a buyer bullshit. It's the, I'm looking to help you. What can I help you with today? You know, and you can like, depending on the rapport that you build with him, like I, I've, I've said to Fizbo's stuff like, hey, what's your favorite part of being a real estate agent? 
what's your least favorite part about being a real estate agent? Well, I'm not a real estate agent. Well, actually, I think you probably are. <laughs> right? Mm. How's that going for you? <laughs> right? But I'd get in front of him as soon as possible so he knows who you are. That's exactly so you're, you're probably going to, you, There's a chance you might get bombarded. Um, and you're, you might be asked things that you don't know the answer to. Here's an, my number. Call me for anything, okay? What's the most important thing I can help you with today? Where are you headed? Perfect. What's important to you about that? Why is that important to you? What do you expect from your realtor if you were to hire one? How did you he come told up me with he was. Advice? He told me he was, uh, May Wren, he's got a daughter with two, two years left in, in uh, Denmark High School. So she's got to stay, so his wife would kill him. So he's going to rent, he said. So I said, well, I'm sorry, I don't help renters. No, I didn't say that. But uh, I help renters that just moved out of a million dollar home. I do. That are probably going to rent a home for five grand a month or something, right? Right. No. Hell so anyway, he was, he's very open and it was great. So I think the quicker I go meet him is the be better way. So. Completely agree. Completely agree. So thanks Doris, for that. What's on your mind, Doris? What are you experiencing oh. <laughs> out there? I'm just going in four or five different directions here. What you discussed with him about the um, HOA. Yeah, that's very important. And some of these management companies, they have their act together and others don't. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a really bad experience at uh, one subdivision, Hardage Farms. The yeah. management company told me one thing, and then the HOA told me uh, something totally different after they moved in. Oh, no, you can't rent it. I said, well, that's what not your management company told me, and uh, nothing was on, on paper. So, oh. and, and they would not give me the number of the uh, the the people that um, ran the, um, man, not the management company, but the HOA in the neighborhood. So it, it well, just turned out to be a real nightmare. I'm going to get that information somehow. I'll knock on every damn door in the neighborhood to find out who it is if I have to. That's my job. My, a real estate agent's job is actually at fairly simple. It is make sure no problems happen. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, so what I might do all of my job and uh, most of your job, and I'm fine with that as long as no no surprises happen, or yeah, when a surprise all, happens, yeah. it's mitigated as soon as possible. And it has right in there no rental restrictions, so no one knew what they were doing. The listing agent didn't know what he was doing, but when I called the uh, management company, oh no, you're fine. There's only been four or five houses uh, that are rented in the neighborhood. So I, so the owner, the person that bought the house, she just ended up flipping it. She still made 15, 20,000. So I didn't have any problems with that. <laughs> well, that, that could have been a nightmare had that transaction yeah. happened 10 years ago, right? So it, your job is to make sure that uh, you hear what you need to hear to make sure your buyer is buying under the right pretenses, right? Right. And and everything you say, hey, I'm and going to ask you to put that in writing for me so that my buyer right. has it for the file. Exactly right. Because you could get a situation where it's like, hey, this woman, Sarah, um, over at, uh, you know, Heritage Property Management said I could rent it. Uh, we don't have a Sarah that works here anymore. Ex uh, you're exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Bill Tapes, he says, to legally protect him from his yeah, advice. Yeah, I, mean, I have to, I have to video everything just in case because I, you know. <laughs> I'm talking all day long. I want to make sure people heard me now. How come some of your chats don't have the agent's name on there? Because I don't know. You know, there's so many new ones that we don't really, I don't really know them all. What are you saying? You know how you're in your box right now, it says Bill Linkwall. Yeah. So right. in the morning chats, there are no names. It's like if they don't have a picture up, you know, they have no name either. So it's like a blank right. box. And I'll make sure I mention that tomorrow. That's, that is, um, I, I don't, if Doris, I'm not meaning to offend you on this, but what? this is a video conferencing <laughs> software. He's brutal. Right? brutal. We're supposed to be on video. Oh. Right. So um, my point is, is like, I, it's a lot easier to talk to people's pictures uh -huh. or oh. real life video rather than a black square. 
Oh, right. well, you know what? I couldn't figure out how to get on. <laughs> okay. Hey, right. Zoom ain't going away, y'all. Zoom ain't going away. And there may be a time. <laughs> there probably is a time. Um, I'm just going to make a quick note of that. Um, uh, there will be a time in the future, guys, um, where your clients are going to expect that you know how to do business in today's current environment, right? So if you're on the phone with some young whip, whippersnapper or whatever, or even an old whippersnapper, and they say, hey, let's just hop on Zoom. And you're like, uh, uh, I don't really have a Zoom account and I don't really know how to like turn on my video. I'm not giving anyone a hard time, but damn, when are you going? No, but I did turn on the video. I don't know what's wrong with my phone. Let's see. <laughs> Here, participants <laughs> mute. <laughs> you're, you're locked in a dark closet, right? Yes. <laughs> So I guess my, my point is, is in the lower left-hand corner where it says mute or stop or start video, just hit that. But my point is, start is that- video. Oh, okay. There you go. So okay. now, um, I mean, look, when you're, in, when you're mm -hmm. hanging out with me, it, it doesn't make it that much of a difference. But if you're on the phone with a prospect or on Zoom with a prospect, boy, you better know how to share screens, allow others to share screens. You better not have the the account where it's like, hey, we got to get off. I only have 40 minutes, right? Like this is a tool of being a real estate professional in 2021. We got to figure out how to use it, right? And I'm not saying that to the two of you, but there's a lot of agents like Julian was just referencing who don't even have their name on the on, on oh, the thing right. or they've got their yeah. kid's name on the thing or their husband's name on the thing. It's like, Dude, when you get on this, like you've got to look like a professional, right? People are judging you all the time. Unfortunately. Yeah. Right. It's just the way it is. So. Right. Um, cool. What else is on your mind? Oh, um, yeah. I've been sending out a lot of um, letters through Equimaxit and uh, Knock and, um, uh, you know, a lot of them just don't want to do anything right now. It, they says they have nowhere to go. So if they sell well, their house, where do they go? Well, um, I, just a quick reminder. Um, we There are programs in the marketplace for this. Yeah, um, Knock. Yeah. Knock, Homeward, um, Keller Offers, Keller Concierge. All those services um, can aid in that type of dilemma, right? So, I mean, where are you going to go? In a perfect world, you'd buy first, right? right. That way, you're a, you're a legitimate, you know, you're as good of a negotiator as possible. And then once that's dealt with, you sell. Now, a lot of people can't afford to do that, and so Knock and Keller Offers and all those places have programs that make that uh, experience more palatable, right? Well, so, yeah, a lot of them want to just rent, or they don't know where to go. They say, "Oh, I may go to Florida." I may go to North Carolina, so they can't make up their mind. So they're sort of on hold in limbo. You know, they said they don't want to make any quick decisions. So yeah, that, that's what I'm really dealing with. Well, I guess the question would be, um, uh, you, gotta, you gotta know the questions to ask to get more information. So just out of curiosity, uh -huh. where would you move? What are what's what are the options? Would you move to Colorado? Would you move to New York City? Would you move, well, to, exactly. Florida? Would you move to LA? Exactly. What's prompting the move? What kind of lifestyle lifestyle do you want to live? How big of a place do you want to be in? Do you yeah, need a place and, for yeah. family members? Does it need to be close to a lake? Does it need to be close to a mountain? Right. Because if you can get them thinking about what they want and why they want it, mm -hmm. their motivations will increase. No, I, I'm, I'm encouraging them to move, period. <laughs> like a lot of them, you know, they're thinking, oh, yeah, a year or two down the road, or I may just want to move out west where my daughter is. So, you know, I'm getting a lot of things, but no one is like in a hurry with what's going on now. That's, that's the whole problem. But that's a really good thing that they tell you that I may move my daughter or something. You're right. making progress. That, that's great information. Be sure to keep it. So uh, when oh, you no, follow I, up I talk to them, but it's just the fact that they're not, you can't push them, you know, right, they're going to move when they want to, if it's going to be a year from now, it'll be a year from now. Yeah. So you it, just it have to get, a year. Uh, yeah. however, you can learn more about their situation to say, oh my gosh, if the, if the only thing that is um, standing between us 
talking today and you move into Florida is the fact that you need some up uh, you need somebody to buy your home so you or sell your home so you can go buy one. Hey, here's a program called Knock. Here's how it works. Is this oh no, I told them about that. I sent them the information with my business card on that. So no, I that and Equimax it is actually I think a better one. They fix your house up. You don't pay until your house closes. You have up to six months. You can't beat that. So uh, no. So um, you know, make sure that you get you know go through any certification you need to go through. And no, I already yeah. Some... No, Equimax it is right in Norcross. A lot of people don't know about it. They have teams that fix your house. So if you can't afford twenty thousand dollars for new granite and everything, they put it in for you. And uh, you only pay it; it's part of your closing costs as long as you've got the money in the house. So, yeah, I mean, so a lot of these things is, I mean, you guys know this, but I'll, I'll try to put it in very simple terms: is our our jobs as real estate agents are let's identify what the biggest challenge our prospect is experiencing, and then let's show them a way where we can help them overcome that challenge, right? So if your biggest challenge is you can't afford two mortgages at once, check this out. Now you don't have to. Is there any reason that is stopping us from getting started today? Right? Nope. Great. Would you prefer to sign in blue or black? And uh, the other issue is I've got four buyers, but um, it's hard to find properties with uh, getting anywhere from three to 10 multiple offers. So, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, we've talked a lot about that in, in the group and the, the, the bottom line there is, um, so first of all, I would have like a list of like eight or 10 things that you know will make that offer more appealing, right? So for example, let me just try to rattle off some now. Um, no closing cost, right? Shorter due diligence period, right? Oh, of course, period. yeah. Uh, uh, no appraisal contingency or coming up with the appraisal difference or no financing contingency or a lower financial contingency. And as is sale, option money, more earnest money, cl quicker closing, using cash, all those things, right? And you've basically got this list, whether it's memorized or on paper. And then during your buyer consultation, you could say, hey, over half of the properties that are selling right now are selling at or above this price, meaning there's almost certainly going to be multiple offers on the property. Here are the following things you can do to increase the likelihood of you winning a multiple offer situation. Are you willing yeah. to do any of this stuff? Because if yeah, you're the not, biggest, yeah, the biggest issue I'm finding is that these uh, a lot of these houses are going to investors and you can't compete with investor with 100 per, you know, my clients have 15, 25% to put down. They can't afford to pay cash. So that's that's what I'm dealing with, yeah. That may be true, but also keep in mind, like if they've got a conditional approval from their lender or they're willing to put up more earnest money or you build really un unusual good rapport with the other agent, right? These are things that could um, account for differences in your offer. I mean, we've had financing offers beat cash offers, right? It's all of, I mean, I'm about to agree to it um, as a buyer's agent. I'm about to agree to buy a home off market. I don't know what the hell she's doing selling this home off market. Oh, yeah. There's no reason. That's the way her. to go. <laughs> There's no reason, right? <laughs> Unless. No, it, it's, it's, it's just a nightmare with only 30 days of inventory. So, yeah. That. Right. That so, but but your challenge starts on the day you have that presentation with the with the buyer prospect, is to say here I want you to be successful because clearly that's important, right? If you don't get if you're not successful, then you don't win, and I don't win. Right. So here's a list of how to be successful. If I were to find you a great home and you ended up having to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, would you be happy? Like I'm paying 80% of sticker price and I want a home warranty and I want every piece of wood rot fixed. And I, you know, um, um, I want the seller to pay 20 grand in closing costs for me. Uh, Unfortunately, that doesn't work like that now. <laughs> 2009. Okay. Last I checked, it was 2021. Okay. So with that attitude, you're not going to be successful in this market. How do you Correct. feel? That? No, no, I, I totally agree with you on that. It's, 
Yeah, it may that may happen again in two, three years, but it's not happening now. That is exactly right. And so our job is, is essentially um, how do we teach our prospects how to behave so that they have the best chance of winning, right? Yeah. And um, uh, if they are in a position where they're just, you know, testing the market or they're curious or they're whatever, um, they're, they may not be willing to do what it takes to be successful, right? Yeah. So if somebody, remember, there's a difference between a condition and an objection. A condition is the divorce decree says I can't move until this day. Okay, well, I can't, <laughs> I can't, obje I can't objection handle my way out of that. No, you okay? got to educate them. Yeah. Right. So that's a situation. That's a circumstance, right? That is right. just a fact. I can't like, hey, I can't move out to Denver until this date because of the, you know, trust or whatever. Okay. So I can't talk my way out of that one. But if they say, hey, um, I need to sell before I buy. Uh, so, but I can't do that because of this. It's like, hey, would a product like this be helpful? Would this solve your problem? Has anyone showed this to you before? Uh, no, no one showed it to me. Whoa, 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 you interviewed other agents and no one else showed this opportunity to you? No. <laughs> Sounds like we should. Right. <clears throat> Make sense? Yes, it does. Okay. What else can I do to help you guys? I guess that's it for now. <laughs> All right. All right. You guys just helped me create 23 minutes of back in my life. Go back to sleep, Bill. Just do I look tired? Nap. I feel like hell right now. Do I look tired? I got to get my hair done at the parlor in about 20 minutes so <laughs> okay take care Bye -bye. Wait, wait, wait. Hang, hang on one second one second oh okay you know who's one of the best people to know in the entire town who the hairdressers oh i know i know right. yes. butter that person up now You're right actually i'll tell you the vfw holes for a plain bingo that was a that was good i used to pick <laughs> up leads all the time there you go so, yeah, but they, it's, they're not able to function now, even with masks, so. Well, um, you just got to go go get your hair done at a different parlor every time. <laughs> <laughs> have, a different, have a great day, okay? Okay, take care. Bye-bye. All right, see ya.